This one is an editorial I'm sharing with you, and I published it on 22nd March 2023. The title was "Regulators Must Aptly Use JDLD Term." JDLD is Zero Liquid Discharge. Now let's start with the theme of the World Water Day 2023. It was accelerating change with a focus on addressing the water and sanitation crisis. Sanitation encompasses a wide range of activities including the management of wastewater and solid waste, the provision of clean water and hygiene education, and the maintenance of clean and healthy living environments. Several scientific bodies including state pollution control boards, state environment impact assessment authorities, the Environment appraisal committees of the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. These are all expected to play a significant role in accelerating this change. Despite being scientific bodies, some of these organizations continue to promote outdated and unscientific practices, such as requiring zero liquid discharge (JLD) outside the factory. or the project premises well this was undoubtedly fascinating in the first decade of the 21st century advancements in technology and the evolution of environmental judiciary have revealed flaws in this condition as we continue to make progress in these areas it's important to reassess and update our understanding of this issue first and foremost the monitoring mechanism for impacts of land disposal on groundwater so the monitoring of groundwater here inside the project premises is a critical concern and the monitoring of the groundwater in respect of the impacts of the land disposal of what wastewater treated wastewater so it raises a question and not only one question it may be a couple of questions about the effectiveness of the measures to prevent wastewater from percolating into underground aquifers and spreading beyond the project boundaries as a result it is essential to ascertain how wastewater disposal within project premises is managed to ensure that it does not adversely affect the surrounding groundwater resources it may be recalled that when the national green tribunal principal bench new delhi wide an order dated 24th may 2019 in the matter of oe number 348 of 2017 salish singh versus aldua food processing private limited stated that no industry can be permitted to dispose treated effluents on land for irrigation plantation or horticulture gardening by prescribing standards applicable without assessment of adequate availability of land and impacts of such disposal on agricultural crops plants and the recipient groundwater impact of precipitation levels also needs consideration while granting such approvals the tribunal clearly mentioned that jdld needs to be considered with respect to use of effluents in the industrial processes not in terms of its disposal on land or farm subsequently the central pollution control board cpcb brought a guideline the guidelines for utilization of treated effluent in irrigation and it was in september 2019 more than 3 years back the spcbs seias and eacs should at least cite a reference to this cpcb guideline so as to ensure a scientifically appropriate effluent disposal i think you viewers know much better is it happening as per the guidelines a project must engage an agricultural scientist or institution for advice on the utilization or rate of application of the effluent for irrigation taking into account the agro climatic conditions and prepare a comprehensive irrigation management plan the irrigation management plan must be verified by the state pollution control board or the union territory pollution control committee 
as applicable, I mean, wherever it is, as per the project's location, when issuing the consent to operate to the industry or the project. Project I'm mentioning because the project can be a building project, it can be a commercial project, it can be a residential project, it can be a hotel, which is which may not be, you know, categorized as an industry. The guideline also requires the construction of an impervious lined storage tank with a minimum capacity of 15 days to store treated effluent during periods of low or no demand based on the irrigation management plan. The treated effluent should be regularly analyzed for compliance with effluent quality standards. It probably happens when there is an online uh, monitoring system, but if there is no uh, installation of an online monitoring system, it doesn't happen. Samples should be collected at the point of discharge for irrigation with a frequency of at least once in every 15 days. In addition to this, reports on the status of soil and groundwater quality should also be submitted to the State Pollution Control Board or the Union Territory Pollution Control Committee as per applicability twice a year. The frequency should be twice a year, six monthly, and during the first week of January and July, it is specified that such reports should be submitted in the first week of January or first week and first week of July. While India has established legal and technical resources and infrastructure to address environmental issues, their effective implementation is the key. It is essential that the authorities fully implement the existing legal provisions to achieve an accelerated change with positive impacts. This will enable industries and other projects to operate in an environmentally friendly manner, reduce legal complications and protect the nation's natural resources.